Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to today's pop up live stream art studio art hive with me, Mary Cronert from the Living Room Community Art Studio. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. How's everybody doing today? I hope everyone's doing okay. Um, interesting day in our community and many communities. It is Orange Shirt Day, the day we uh, honor the lives that have been lost and the survivors of the, the residential school system in Canada. Uh, it's an important day, so we're in orange uh, in solidarity. My love and thanks go out to every person who's participating in this day in any small way. And yeah, it's, it's important that we remember, it's important that we make change. It's important that we do what we can to prevent, to prevent uh, and to stop all the, the horrible things that continue to happen to our indigenous community members. Uh, yeah. So much going on, a lot of heavy stuff there. I'm not necessarily wanting to make today heavy, but I'm opening the door to conversations about that if there are things you want to share. And uh, we can talk about how we can contribute as better humans to making the world a better place. And hello, Shelley, hello, Wendy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And how am I? Oh, well, thank you for asking. I'm doing okay. I have a bit of a migraine today, so for folks who are watching this uh, during the live stream or watching while it's been archived. You may notice uh, some things that uh, seem a bit off. Sometimes when I have heavy aura days like this, I tend to slur my speech a little bit. My eyes, it's hard to focus on things sometimes. I'm not in an enormous amount of pain, but sometimes it's difficult to articulate uh, thoughts or ideas when I'm having a migraine. So for anyone else out there who also suffers from migraines, that kind of chronic pain, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I just invite you to be patient and uh, understanding with me, but let's doesn't mean we have to stop making art or chatting. This time of the week for me is always such an enriching, uh, enriching point of connection. So I'm just so appreciative to be here and I'm appreciative that you're here as well. Thanks so much for joining. Um, what else, what do we need to know? For folks who are watching or listening who may not have joined us before, you are most welcome. Uh, you're, if you're watching the live stream, we invite you to participate in the chat if you feel comfortable doing so. Share the projects that you're working on, pictures or descriptions of anything that you're happy about, or perhaps you might be seeking um, like uh, support on, like troubleshooting different things you're working on. We have such a fantastic community here and inevitably there will be someone out there who can help you uh, in the way that you need. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for that support if you want or need it. If you're watching the live stream once it has been archived, uh, you are also welcome to be here, of course, and you may still post and participate in the chat, although uh, I may not be able to get back to you right away. And so if it seems strange that people aren't responding, it's it might be because we're not actively watching it together at the same time, but we do our best. And if for whatever reason, I miss a comment or a question, and I'm not as responsive as you'd like, please feel free to follow it up and send me a message or an email at info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org so that I can respond and engage with you. I'm always happy to work and meet new community members. Uh, other things to keep in mind during the live stream, it is a safe space, we do our best. Uh, we're not perfect, but we try. We try our best to create a space that is comfortable and safe for everyone to participate and engage in. So we ask people to be um, respectful and supportive of one another during the live stream. Uh, we rarely have issues with that. People are super nice to one another, but sometimes we can get really hard on ourselves. So please remember to be kind and supportive of yourself as well. You are a part of our community. And if you're having trouble with that inner critic, if it's being extra mean or, I don't know, fierce with you today, let us know and we can talk to it. We can challenge it, see what it wants. And if it has nothing constructive to say, we can symbolically delete it. I can crunch it up and uh, throw it away. We can find ways to challenge that uh, negative self-talk so that you have more space in your day for what you want and are able to connect and enjoy 
being here and being okay with wherever you might be at today. If folks have been using or drinking, we'll also invite them to come back another day when they haven't been. There's no judgment. It's just about creating an environment in which we can communicate effectively with one another. And sometimes when folks are in an altered state, hey, Jay, uh, it's difficult to know where they're at, difficult to understand what they might be trying to say. Um, and there are folks who use this space and this time for their own recovery processes or harm reduction journeys. So we all are very, very respectful of that, of course. And those of us, I think many of us, our lives have been touched by addiction in some way or other. We we understand how difficult and precious that journey can be. So we rarely have issues with that anyways. The last part of our safe space, whether we're in the studio or here online, of course, is we ask everyone to let us know if something's making you feel weird. That can be a really difficult thing to do sometimes. I appreciate the kind of courage it can take to step forward with that. But we do invite you to let us know, let me know, if there's something going on here that's making you feel weird or out of place. If you can't do it in this moment or don't feel safe enough doing it in this moment, please feel free to reach out to me afterwards and let me know. Keep us accountable, keep me accountable, I'm accountable too. And we can learn how to be supportive of one another in these virtual art hives that we co-create with one another. So yeah, so that's the spiel. Wow, it's been a long time since I've given the spiel all in one sitting now that I'm not in the studio don't often have a chance to do that. So thanks for making space for me to do that today. And people are asking how I'm doing. How are you doing out there? How have your weeks been so far? What are you working on? What are you excited about? What kind of creative change are you making in your day? And as we chat, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna get started on a mood circle, just filling a little circle here on my paper with color just to kind of get in touch where, with where I'm at today and let it out onto the paper. So I'm going to begin doing that. And do please feel free to share pictures. I know we have such an incredible creative community. I'm always excited to see what people are working on or hear what people are working on. Sometimes when we're working in our own spaces, away from one another, we miss out on those beautiful opportunities. And of course, pictures uh, if, with consent, if you have family members or kids living with you, little peoples, uh, they're welcome to share their work too. They may not have access to the computer, I realize. But if they'd like to share what they're working on, why not, let's show and tell. What an interesting week. Has it been an interesting week? Feels like it. There's a lot going on in the world. I don't know. I don't know if you folks have noticed. There's a lot going on in the world. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like there's a little too much going on in the world. Not all bad. Definitely interesting. Let's see. And as I'm talking about the world, am I kind of accidentally creating a world? I don't know. Let's see where this takes me. Again, shout out to Gilbert who helped spark this activity for me, lovely opportunity just to fill a circle with color. And if you don't have watercolor paints at home, that's okay. You can fill it in with any color you have on hand. You might have pencil crayons, you might have crayons. Maybe all you have is a cup of coffee on hand. I think we'll explore painting with coffee one of these days and see where it goes. I've been wanting to do that for a while, and some of the other virtual art hives uh, have been doing a bit of that. So I gotta get on that. Explore painting with coffee. Has anybody else out there ever done that? Painted with coffee or tea? I've dyed fabrics before with tea. If 
liking the sound of the brush on the paper today as well. <sighs> Creating space for the things that need to be felt, the things that need to be said, the things that need to be let out. How do we do that for ourselves? I think one of the reasons why I love this simple activity so much is because it doesn't, it lets things out without necessarily challenging me or forcing me to figure it out. Hello, Brandon, lovely. You're <laughs> painting with colors from nature. So, mm, interesting. Using colors of nature or actually using things from nature to paint with. That's something we can explore. Maybe collect some autumn leaves and stew them for a bit, see what kind of pigments emerge from the natural prod, you know, the natural pigments in those things. Some are more intense than others, I know, but yeah, who's painted with the, uh, who's made their own dyes at home from natural objects? And Ellen, hello, welcome, Ellen. Ellen, I've traced accidental coffee spills on paper in felt pen, most satisfying. I love that. Is yeah, that kind of like a, a spontaneous creation. It's similar to different, but that idea of uh, taking the accident in your artwork and elaborating upon it, see what, you know, looking at listening to it to see what emerges, what story it wants to tell. Coffee circles. Maybe that's where we'll start, Ellen. Thank you. That's a really good starting point. Coffee circles on paper. Yeah, and then seeing what evolves. And Jay saying, yes, it can be really fun to paint with coffee. Excellent. We did an assignment on using uncommon mediums for an art painting class once. It was really fun to explore and see what everyone came up with. Okay, folks, it's on the books. Let's do this. And Nikki, hello, Nikki. Uh, nice to see you again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? This time of, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on in the world. A lot going on in the world. If you have, if for folks who are chatting about those, uh, you know, painting with coffee or non-traditional kind of natural pigments, if you have anything on hand that you'd like to take a quick snap of and post, please do. Sometimes those things can seem what intimidating sometimes it's a I maybe because everything that we see shared most often what's shared online is the final product that has been carefully curated we're not seeing people's processes when you're on Pinterest we, we rarely are we're seeing the final project and sometimes that final project is one that has been labored over most intensely to be presented in just such a perfect way we'll hear another reminder for everyone in the living room in the studio or in our virtual space here there's no perfection allowed. And I am happy to model that. <laughs> I don't know if I can model anything else, to tell you the truth. And Jay, oh, interesting. I make black walnut ink every fall to go with your feather quill pens. Wow. Okay. The kids love writing and drawing with quill and ink. Amazing. They say it feels like they're at Hogwarts. I can imagine that. I can totally see that. If you have a recipe that you would like to share, Jay, I'm sure there's other people who are watching or listening who would love to try making that. I've never done that before. Black walnut ink. I have never made that before. I'd love to know how. I'd love to experiment. Yeah, what it, like, just what it, uh, what it looks like, what it, I was going to say taste, but no, safety first. Don't taste the ink doesn't matter if it's from natural stuff or not. I, I, I can't say that's a good idea. Do not eat your art supplies, generally speaking. Unless you're literally like making art with pudding or, you know, or, oh, that's, an, that's interesting. Once you've painted with coffee, can you still drink it? Of course you can. You know what? This is just a gray area for safety and liability sake. I'm going to stay out of it. Opinions are your own, but safety first, everyone. What an interesting headspace I'm in today. <laughs> I 
Aha. Uh -huh. I think one of my favorite things about working with watercolor and watercolor doodling, which would be, I imagine, similar to painting with coffee, are those accidental moments where things just expand and flow on their own. Letting the water do the work, letting the paint do the work for you. And seeing what happens. Hmm. <laughs> so yes, Jay, yes, please share that recipe if you can. Or if you know a link, you can post the link to the recipe as well, if that's easier. But again, I'm not the boss of you, so you do you. In your own time. Let's see, what else does this need? <sighs> what else does this need? I think today, on days like this, I feel drawn to things with clear boundaries. I think, again, the circle is such a beautiful way of containing things. I don't always understand exactly why I'm drawn to containing things. But sometimes it just feels better to create within a structure. I'm always interested too, just to see how far I go in filling all the space on the paper. I think there's, I don't know if anyone else experiences this, but I think it comes from that fear of taking something too far or wrecking it, you know? But sometimes I have to just challenge myself to go there and see what happens and work with it. What's the worst that can happen? Let it be, fill the space. Permission to fill the space. Mm, yeah, I agree, Brandon. So referring to like the control, the structure, creating within a structure, a shape, a sense of control. Absolutely. When things in the world are interesting that uh, having those self-imposed kind of boundaries helps me feel perhaps a little bit safer a little bit more in control and then within that shape things that go out of control are easier to work with easier to either accept or to transform hmm like that. I just love what happened there. That was not within my control. I let that happen, but was not expecting that to happen exactly. But I'm so glad that it did in the way that it did. 
That's something that I wouldn't necessarily intentionally try to do. I don't know what I don't know. Oh, and Teresa, hello! Oh, fantastic. So Teresa is... Now you're taking Margaret to pick up her stuff? Pick up her stuff, oh, at the exhibit. I know that some of our community members have had exhibits in and around town at various spaces. Margaret, hello, Margaret. Um, please say hello to Margaret if she's not listening or watching right now. Um, for those of you who are, have been to the studio, you, you, you probably, chances are you've met Margaret. Margaret was one of our regulars, uh, vibrant creator, uh, a lot of hand, beautifully handcrafted, hand embroidered, hand stitched work, beautiful dolls, quilts, uh, everything, nothing with a pattern, everything from Margaret's own imagination. So full of color and life. Margaret is a colorful human being. That I think I can say and everyone can agree with. So I know that Margaret recently had an art exhibit, perhaps some of her quilts. Um, such a talented artist in our community. Oh, I'm so glad that you're and Thank you, Teresa, for helping Margaret out. Love that. How we find ways to be a resource to one another when we can. In difficult times, it's not easy. But I imagine everyone in their own way, depending on where you are, you know, we find ways. Won't always look the same, it won't always be the same kind of support we offer, but hey, even just being here, you're offering support. And hello, Lottie! Hello, 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 welcome, welcome! Lottie says, hi, hope everyone is okay. The moon circle looks like a tropical island, but from a bird's eye view. Ah, yes, that's one of the reasons why I love what I call doodle watercoloring or watercolor doodling. I often think that, it, uh, oftentimes think that it looks, um, when I stand back from it, like a kind of topography, I guess. Like I'm able to, like I'm very, very far above something and looking down. Maybe that's another reason why I love creating within that shape idea. It's control, but it also offers perspective. I love that. On another day, I might choose to zoom in on something like this. That would be a really interesting creative exercise too, to zoom in and just elaborate on one small feature or fill a page with one, like a smaller section of this to just embiggen it. And then another day, what? And maybe I'll do it as it is, as it's meant to be in its normal size. I don't know. I don't know. And Jay saying, oh, back to the black walnut ink recipe. So for folks who are watching and listening, I'm seeing Jay post about this now, creating every fall, uh, Jay creates black walnut ink. So, uh, oh, Jay says it's actually very easy. Collect black walnuts. They're all over the ground in the fall. Those slightly bigger than a golf ball and green, they're green? Is that the green, the ones we see with the green casings? And then let them sit until the skins start to turn brown or black. Oh, this is okay. You say it's easy, but I love it. Okay, lots of detailed instructions here. Fantastic. So let them sit until the skins start to turn brown, black. Use a knife to cut the hull off. Wear gloves. They will stain your skin, Jane sa Jay says. And put the nut aside for later or to share with the squirrels. Always a nice thing to do. Uh, put the hulls in a pot that you don't mind destroying. So everyone has an art pot at home, right? Is that just me and Jay or no? Does everyone have an art pot at home? Uh, and then cover them with water, bring to a gentle boil, cover and simmer, simmer for three, three plus hours, stirring occasionally. The longer you boil, the more concentrated and darker it will be. Then you strain out the hulls and pour your ink into a sealable container, a glass jar with stoppers. Now, is a stopper important? Will Is there a pressure situation that can build in that jar? Let me know. Or can you use just a screw top lid to contain that ink? Um, thanks, Jay. That's super awesome. Oh, good. And another good top tip from Jay. You can also add some rubbing alcohol to your ink mixture to prevent the growth of mold. Brilliant. So if anyone makes this ink in the next week, please let me know. Feel free to share pictures of what you've created. I would love to see the results and maybe I'll try as well. I know uh, maybe we can, someone can share a picture or a post of what it, like a black walnut, what it actually looks like because I'm not, not so sure what that looks like right now. Brendan, there, do you, can you share a picture? You seem like someone who might know exactly what a black walnut looks like. 
And Jay says, with a stopper, not a pressure problem, more of a leak prevention. This stuff will really stain everything if it leaks. Good to know. Yeah, I feel some of the best, uh, well, obviously the, you know, the best dyes available are often nature's own. Lots of reasons for that. Let's see. That's interesting. Interesting, Mary. Why did you do that? Hmm. I'm not sure how exactly I feel about that. I'm going to sit with that and let it be. So that for my warm up today, that is my mood circle. It's a little bit watery, There's some pools of ink or some pigment there on the page. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to gently move it aside. Hopefully without, this is the, this is the interesting part, hopefully without spilling. Well, if it spills, hey, it spills, then I'll do something with that. Let's see, do, 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 do. where can I put this? Over there. Okay. Ah, excellent. Okay. Now what? Oh, fantastic. And Jay's just added a link Add pictures after the video. I can't seem to add them right now, but here is the link. Thank you so much. Another fantastic example. And I'll try and share that again in the show and tell post we do after the live stream so that folks can find it as well. And wow, that's awesome. So it's, it, it's a dark, uh, kind of brown, brown black ink by the looks of that picture. But I guess, as you said, the longer you stew it or boil it, the darker it'll get. Love it, brilliant. Let's see. So I'm gonna continue on today. I'm feeling like doing a bit of textile kind of fiber art stuff. Let's see. You can see I've done, I have all of these little bits and pieces hanging around. I went through a period uh, where I had all my fabric scraps and I thought I don't want to lose these. They were such great colors, especially every time, I don't know if anyone else out there collects uh, fabric sample books from de like designers or upholsterers, but they're such lovely colors and beautiful textiles, but sometimes there's not a, not a whole lot you can do with them within traditional sewing or if you don't have an industrial machine. But I'm going to try uh, making some shapes and embroidering on them, doing some stitch craft today. And uh, yeah, just playing with that. So let's see where it goes. And if I can, perhaps I'll create some jewelry. I'm, this seems like another project that I might not complete today, but we'll see where it goes. We'll see how much I get done. Again, that's a space for works in progress. Now, sometimes I use my sewing machine for this. It's really easy. It's nice. It gets the job done quick, but it's not as detailed. So I wanted to play with hand stitching these pieces to see where it goes. So welcome to everyone who might be joining in the live stream now. Hello to everyone who's watching it archived. You are welcome. And even though you're here in the archive version, you're still contributing to the creative energy. So thank you for that. I'm thinking of you. If you are joining and wondering what the heck is this? I don't know. Sometimes I just don't know. This is an afternoon, every Wednesday afternoon, we. We gather, we create art together. I create art, but you don't necessarily have to create art. It's a space where we can connect and chat with one another, share our creative works, our resources with one another, let things out, reach out for support. Uh, there's so many different things you can do and it doesn't always involve art, but I think what it does involve is that creative energy, creative connection, and um, what I like to call creative humaning which is such an important thing. So if you've got supplies and you're working on your own art, 
fantastic. Maybe you'd like to join me in doing some textile or fiber arts. That's super cool. But if not, if you'd rather use this time to listen or watch and do something else like homework or work on organizing your fabric stash or washing dishes, whatever the case might be, you're welcome to use this time for what you need to do. And hopefully at the end uh, of your time with us, you leave feeling a little bit more relaxed, maybe a little bit more inspired, maybe, I don't know. I really don't know. How do folks leave? I know that, you know, we've had some lovely, lovely, lovely feedback from folks. And I'm not fishing for compliments here, but if there's things we could do a little differently, a little bit better, let us know. Always open to feedback. All right, what's happening here? And sometimes it's nice to just listen and not have to think about things too much. It's something that used to happen at the studio quite frequently, that sense of just not being on your own. You might be working on your own. You might be working privately, trying to figure things out, not wanting to connect with anyone physically or in an active way, but just sometimes being with other people somehow helps that feeling of not being alone, helps you feel seen, helps you feel heard. And hopefully, hopefully we can provide a little bit of that for everybody who's watching or listening or chatting. <sighs> excellent. Excellent, excellent. There are days where I'm really, really grateful that coffee exists, that it's a thing. Today is one of those days. All right, what am I going to... In the past, I've started fiber works or textile pieces during a live stream and uh, without having my needles around, my sewing needles. And today I made sure to have all the needles everywhere. So I've got so many different kinds of sewing things. Which one is right for this? Hmm, I think I want that one. And I also like to let people know, just in case you haven't figured it out yet, I'm by no means a professional in anything I do here. So I think that's one of the reasons why I say no perfection allowed. It's permission for myself as much as for anyone else who might be creating along with us. Now, what colors do I want to use? Hmm. Hmm. Hmm? Let's see. I think it's one of the things I love about being an artist or claiming your artist self. You don't have to wait for permission. You don't have to go to school. You can if you want. But it's really about trusting yourself, trusting that you have enough to say. And what you say, what you have to say is worth saying. You exist. And that's enough sometimes. Being here is enough sometimes. What do I think about that, folks? Hmm. I'm just gonna use this other fabric as a base to create, like to stitch on. No, maybe I want something different. Lots of interesting sound effects coming from me today. So I'm going to start in the center. That's a little clearer for me. Simplicity. Dream big, start small. Come, come, come. Oh, shaky hands, threading a needle. <gasps> I did it. <sighs> Celebrate the small stuff. That is what I call an accomplishment. <laughs> so now I'm just going to anchor this onto the fabric. I'm just going to play with different stitches. I just start. Mm. 
I was inspired to do this by an artist that I think is based uh, out of Laf Lafayette, Louisiana. I wish I could remember the artist's name. One of the things I love and miss about being able to travel, so glad that I can travel in the first place, that I've had those opportunities. So thank you universe, thank you creator, whatever creator is out there or are out there. Um, I love uh, learning about how other people create, how other people see the world, how they express themselves, when that's through food, through design. I love having new windows opened up for me and I love learning. And there was, uh, I was in Lafayette, Louisiana at a fabulous little film festival called Cinema on the Bayou. And there was kind of like a arts consignment shop there. It was super small for hyper-local artists, which I think is always such an important thing to honor the creators uh, that might not have opportunities to have things distributed in a big way. And sometimes creators can't create en masse anyways. I think there's this interesting place we've reached in our culture sometimes where we think it's not worth it if we can't reproduce it a million different ways, but one or two pieces every once in a while, there's value in that. And when I was in the shop, I happened to notice these beautiful fabric scrap necklaces and uh, arm cuffs and things and uh, things like that and they were just lovely and simple and I was really taken with them something about I'm always attracted to tactile things I'm always attracted to things that feel handmade as opposed to machine made uh, there's a place for everything of course and there yeah, I just, I was spent, I must have spent a good half hour just looking at these, these beautiful creations and touching them. And I think the shop owner was getting a little weirded out with me being there. Um, not the first time that's happened. But eventually I, I didn't have a whole lot of money. Um, well, artist life. Uh, but I decided to splurge on these beautiful pieces because I thought, well, I'm supporting a local artist. And this is, the pieces just were so inspiring to me that these are going to pay it all back. I'm going to get all of this and more from these beautiful little pieces. And I have. I can't wear them anymore because one of my cats chewed off the, the kind of like the attaching bits. So I've got to do a little bit of repair on those pieces. Oh, cats. Cats. It's a moment for cats, but um, I love them. I love my cats too. And I'm looking forward to uh, repairing them when I have a moment. I might actually start a new kind of live stream all about mending. I think I might've mentioned this in the past. I think I might've, but hopefully once things settle down on our end, I'll have some time to actually follow through on that. Mending with Mary. <laughs> stranger things stranger things folks but yeah traveling and discovering artists I love and I love supporting those local people whenever I have a chance I never I don't think these pieces were named I don't think there was a sign if there was maybe I'd missed it I should have documented who the artist was so that I could connect with them and let them know how much I appreciated their work Canadians aren't so good at that I don't know who else is out there listening or watching or where you're from? But we, uh, one of the things, that historically, Canadians have been known to, to uh, underappreciate their artists while they are alive anyways. So now I try to let folks know as often as I can how much I enjoy their work. Let them know when they're here, when they're with us. Yeah, I don't know. Has anyone else had that wonderful experience of finding something on a travels? And it doesn't have to be international travel. Travel in your own neighborhood. Travel in your own community. Just stumbling upon something beautiful. Something that speaks to you in a profound way. That you know is handmade by someone. 
It's a favorite thing at thrift stores too, to go through the art section to look at the handmade art that's been donated or let go of, released into the world. You never know what you'll find. I'm glad I chose to do this today. Thanks for being here with me while I do it. What am I doing here? I think I'm just doing a, a simple chain stitch. Yeah? For all you embroiderers out there, all you cross stitchers, all you texture, textile artists. Just a simple chain stitch with shaky hands. If you're out there, if you're just tuning in, welcome. And again, I'd like to remind folks, you're welcome to stay for as long as I'm here. But if you can only hang out for a few minutes, that's okay too. You do what feels right to you. These are, what, it's the last day of September? Very interesting month, a transition month, a busy month. And we haven't quite hit that point in the season where things begin to slow down a little bit. Who knows if that'll occur this year. So take the time when you need it to slow down, take a breath. I know that's what I'm doing. Hmm. Hello, computer noises. Now that's beginning to unravel there, so I'm going to take this moment. Just gonna do a little bit of. Do I want to do a blanket stitch? No. I think I'll just try and see what happens if I do this. If I had a machine right now, I'd probably do a little zigzag stitch around the edges. Oh, and some folks were asking, I know Wendy was asking, the poem that we co-created last week, and thank you to everyone who contributed during the live stream and after the live stream as well. Uh, I just essentially took everyone's uh, thoughts and words and integrated them into a poem. I didn't change a whole lot because each piece seemed to flow beautiful into one another. Ah. Well, thank you, Nikki. So Nikki's saying the rain and sun together bring a beautiful rainbow, like the colors in, oh, my watercolor. Nature is amazing, absolutely. Um, the poem we shared, the poem we created, I shared with the Art Hives community and the Art Hives show and tell. This, was it this past Monday? I believe it might have been, or was it Friday? I can't remember now, uh, but it was very well received. We didn't have a whole lot of time to talk about our virtual hives. So the poem was a, a perfect way to let everyone in 
to the space that we have here together and kind of just created this perfect picture of what we do, what we share, what it means to people. So thank you. Thank you so much for contributing. I know some folks contributed after the fact as well, so I'm going to revisit the piece and add those bits in, and then I will share them with you here. So perhaps I can share it tomorrow. It's an epic poem. It's, it's long, but it's beautiful. So look for it coming your way in the next few days. And I have been thinking about writing quite a bit recently. That piece that uh, you contributed to kind of sparked uh, a whole new wave of writing within myself. And of course today, an artist, uh, Mary Kelly, who I was mentioning earlier, I think I was mentioning earlier, or um, it's Orange Shirt Day, and I was first introduced to Mary Kelly through those processes when we were uh, participating in a traveling art hive exhibit. So the art hives weren't traveling, but we were traveling art from one art hive to another uh, across Canada on the theme, the subject of reconciliation, truth and reconciliation. And the question that was asked at that time to everyone who was invited to contribute was, what does reconciliation look like to you? And a lot of the archives are connected to universities or colleges, post-secondary learning institutes, so they were able to have uh, really interesting conversations in a very structured way, but because we were a community archive, uh, I thought, well, we, it would be wonderful if we could invite someone with lived experience to speak about this, and that was when I was first introduced to Mary Kelly, who is a poet and uh, survivor of the residential school horrors that happened here in North America. Remarkable artist, a uh, remarkable speaker, a gifted speaker, and was gracious enough to come out and connect with our community and share her story as well as her art with us. So I think if you look to today's quote on Facebook, that is from one of Mary Kelly's poems. And uh, I think I will share the poem that she created with us for the, the Reconciliation Traveling Exhibit as well. Such a remarkable human being and just a fabulous, fabulous person. But I, oftentimes, uh, yeah, just never, I never fail to be inspired. And it's always such a great reminder when you hear her story uh, of how the power of art, the power of art in all of our lives to, in some cases, many cases, save lives. Let me know if you're out there and you've heard Mary speak, let me know, because it's impossible to come away from an encounter with Mary and not be moved, not be impacted. But such a fantastic writer. So yeah, I've been, I've had writing on the brain, creative writing on the brain. And I know we have quite a number of, of writers in this community as well. see Wendy, Wendy saying, yeah, is that to sharing the poem? I will do so. I will do so. Maybe today I can find a way to read it out. Oh, yeah, I'll see. I think it's on my other laptop. My other laptop. That is a privileged phrase if ever I heard it. Heard one before. If there's anyone else out there 
who is participating in Orange Shirt Day events and you'd like to share, please do. I think they're going on throughout the week here, in Oshawa at least. And although we can't come together, I think a lot of them are online now. They're virtual events as well. Folks are working on things that they'd like to share, of course, let me know. And Jay saying, the kids wore their orange shirts today to school. Yes, yes, yes. And Nikki asking a question. So what's your favorite thing to do on a rainy day? That's a beautiful question to ask. I think it depends, doesn't it? I look forward to rainy days. And we haven't had a whole lot of them here in Oshawa. I don't know about where you're at. And Wendy also, oh, Orange Shirt Dale around. Wendy Johnson saying, my grandsons wore orange today as well. It's such an important thing that the schools are doing. When I know when I was their age, I did not know anything about the residential school system. I had no, no concept of it. it in fact, I had no concept of anything related to the First Peoples of Turtle Island or Indigenous, our Indigenous community members. And I went to a school named Iroquois. That's a little ironic. Is it ironic? I don't know. Horrible, perhaps, is a better word to describe that. So it's so important now that as much as possible, as much as they're allowed to introduce teachings about this land and the people who were here before colonization and are still here, who are survivors. Because that's another thing to remember. They are survivors, a, a perfect example of utilizing that voice, that resistance to, to continue to fight, to hold on to what matters, to create new paths when others have been taken away. But returning to that question that Nikki asked, favorite things to do on a rainy day? Well, if I don't have to work, I think drink tea and read a book. Yeah. I think it's a my favorite thing as well about, um, I know not everyone lives in a place where it snows, but similar to rain, whenever there's a really big snowstorm and just being lucky enough to have a place to live and to be able to look out and see the snow fall and just to know to be warm, to be dry. Reading, reading a book is one of the things I'll always turn to. What a lovely thing to be able to do. But what else, what else do folks like doing when it's gray outside, when the weather begins to change and you have an opportunity to sit or to do what you want to do? What do we enjoy doing on days like that? As far as artwork, I think probably sewing, stitching, things like that as well come in close second to reading. Oh, Wendy, yes, popcorn and a movie is what I like on a rainy day. Yep. Yeah. 
when the weather, yeah, it's a lovely excuse sometimes. It's like, oh, well, it's raining. I'm not going to hang out doing things outside today. So I guess it's okay to watch a movie. Delicious. I love it. Are there folks out there who enjoy being outside on rainy days? Sometimes I do. And I know that there are different kinds of art that can be created on rainy days. For a long time, I've wanted to work with water resistant paints to do secret poetry or secret messages on concrete. I don't know, has anyone out there experimented with that? So when it's dry outside, you wouldn't see it, but when it rains, where the water resists, an image begins to come forth. And it might have been in the UK where I first saw this, actually, where there were artists who were um, creating pavement poetry. So on sidewalks and things like that, uh, stenciling with clear, with transparent, water-resistant spray paints. And then when it rained, suddenly these poems would show up. And Carlos, lovely hello, welcome, Carlos. Love sitting on the porch with the kitties and hubby, reading or listening to tunes, maybe journaling or sketching or even just chatting. That is beautiful. Yeah, of course, yeah. Cuddling. If you've got something or someone to cuddle, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, curling up with a blanket. Taking that time, that space for yourself to simply be, appreciate, feel the love wherever it might be coming from. And if you are tuning in, let's see, oh my goodness, it's almost three. Are you kidding? How could that happen? How did that happen? Wow, I get sewing, I get stitching and time flies. I was just about to welcome folks. If you're tuning in right now, welcome to the live stream pop-up art studio, our virtual hive. You're welcome to create art along with us, doing whatever it is you want to do with whatever materials you have on hand. You're also welcome just to listen, participate in that kind of creative energy that everyone's bringing to the table today feels like there's a sense of what comfort in the air. Hey, hey, Laura. Laura's saying, rainy days are great for weeding. Yes, you know what? You're right. Usually once it stops, but sometimes not. But Laura, of course, this makes perfect sense for Laura. Records and crocheting, collage, or reading. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as I, I think you have quite, uh, you have an amazing record collection too. An amazing record collection. Yeah, and the weeding thing is interesting. That's, that's really true. I've noticed that as well, that after a rain, it's, uh, especially the deep, like the taproot kind of weeds, they tend to come out of the ground really easily after a nice rain. And I will always remember, speaking of rains, rains on warm days are a lovely kind of thing. They're unique, aren't they? They're a little different than rains, a classic cold November rain. Uh, speaking of Margaret, there's one memory from the studio that I will always hold dear. It had been, I think it was a summer, a summer memory as well, so very hot. And in the studio, we don't have air conditioning. And Laura adding to hers, uh, so... Not only records, crochet, and collage, coloring, or reading, but of course tea and the cat on Laura's lap. That's a perfect image right there. I love it so much. Uh, but yes, Margaret and rain. It was a summer in the studio. We don't have air conditioning, so it can get very hot in that space. And uh, we do have fans and things like that, but it's still, it can be sometimes unbearably hot. And there was just one of those beautiful moments where the skies opened up unexpectedly and there was a torrential downpour outside. 
and Margaret being Margaret just got up went outside and just stood in the rain arms to the air welcoming it laughing and maybe even singing if I'm maybe I'm misremembering this or confusing it with other others times but just such a beautiful moment of welcoming the rain dancing literally dancing in the rain which of course you could do in November as well if you like just wrap up warm afterwards <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful things to do on a gray day, on a rainy day, on a chilly day. Lovely part of self care, making that space for yourself, for ourselves. And that can be lovely too in the way of rituals. I don't know, for folks who watched our live stream on Instagram yesterday, we chatted with uh, some folks from a Spanish-speaking art hive, a virtual hive. So never, I don't know if it truly existed in a physical way, but when the pandemic arrived, they found it was a great opportunity to create a virtual space just like this, except they do it on Zoom, where people can connect and speak uh, their language and safety and comfort and in the conversation yesterday with them, we were just describing and exploring ritual and creativity and how important that is. And culturally, I think different cultures prioritize rituals in different ways. But it made me think uh, just about what kind of rituals we create for ourselves because they can be independent of culture independent of religion, we have opportunities to create those kind of moments for ourselves. And perhaps that rainy day question speaks to that, what we do for ourselves on a rainy day. And Laura saying, yes, Emily loves running out into the rain too. Oh. And Laura saying, I miss Margaret and her lovely imagination. Yeah, such an incredible imagination. Well, Folks, you can reach out to Margaret on Facebook and we'll try, uh, I would love to um, invite her to, you know, maybe be featured in an artist chat too in the future. We're in uh, like communication, trying to figure stuff out. Same as with everyone else, timing, figuring out timing. And not everyone is as comfortable on technology, unfortunately. So we work with what we have and we do our best and keep advocating because I believe technology is I think, a human right. Having access to technology is a human right, especially this has been highlighted recently. And Nikki saying dancing in the rain. Oh, dancing in the rain with your baby niece was so beautiful when she was two. Now she is 27 and still remembers things about rain and good memories. Absolutely. How, how do we create memories for ourselves, folks? How do we do that? How do we create memories? I think there's something about memories and having a tie to something emotional. Yeah, I think we all know that. And what can we do? Can we play a part in creating more meaningful memories for ourselves by doing things with intention and choosing things that we want to include in our lives. It doesn't always necessarily mean happy things, but we can, we can do our best to choose to focus on and draw our attention and intention to the things that bring meaning to our lives, the things that feel rich and delicious, important. And taking those moments, reflecting on those moments when they occur spontaneously, too. And who knows, maybe building rituals around them. Maybe. Because definitely certain memories that I have mean that I will always think, I'll automatically go to that place, that memory of Margaret dancing in the rain whenever I see a rain shower on a summer day, for example. Oh, thank you, Carlos. Carlos says, that's beautiful phrasing, Mary. I love that. 
Maybe you can remind me of what I said because it's instantly gone from my head. <laughs> oh, you don't have to though. You don't have to. That's all right. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not sure. I know this is a little fussy what I'm working on today. Do people want to see it up close? Maybe I'll do a little close up right now just to give folks a... Oh, but before I do that, Nikki says, I think memories are attached to sheer happiness and sometimes sadness, grief, but they make us who we are. Hmm. Hmm. Who would we be without memory? Oh, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. So choosing those moments when we can. We can't choose every moment, obviously. But I think that's a unique gift that we have as human beings. Laura says, oh, Laura says goodbye. I need to get M from school. Oh, thank you for joining us, Laura. Thank you. And give Emily a big hug, a big hug from the living room peeps, okay? Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. And again, a reminder after this too, I'll post a little show and tell if people want to add in pictures of what they've been working on, share what uh, perhaps the conversations that we had today together inspired, please feel free to share. You can share images of what you've been working on, links to pages where perhaps you've created other things, writing, blogs, videos, songs, and maybe it's something that you created that wasn't inspired directly by today. That's okay too. It's okay to be proud of what you've created. Oh, double thread. I didn't notice. So let's here, let's just keep doing this then. It's okay to celebrate what you've made, folks. Hey, bye, Laura. And as far as the sewing, yeah, let's see. Let's have a little look-see. I can untangle this from that. Oh, 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 here we go. The knots are coming to visit. Let's do a little close up. So, yeah, it's coming along. If I was working on this on a sewing machine, it would speed by, but I wouldn't have the same relationship with it that I do when I'm sewing it by hand, which I think is a fascinating thing. Again, the character that comes into something or comes from something. Nothing wrong with using a sewing machine. Nothing wrong at all. But this has a little more wonkiness. I love the imperfections. And so my goal is to make a series of these and then overlap them and layer them to create, I think this one will maybe be a necklace or a bracelet, something like a, a cuff that I can wear. I like the organic shapes. I love that I'm repurposing fabric scraps that I have lying around that weren't really large enough to use in any other kinds of projects. Just an invitation to get creative with what I had on hand. And I think I've got a lot of fabric, folks. May need to have an intervention at one point or another. Or not. If I keep creating with you here, maybe I'll use them all up. I'll use all my fabric scraps up. Yeah. Oops. Hello, needle. Where are you going off to? I'm going to jump over there. So obviously a work in progress. I'm not going to finish this off today, but that's okay. I'm going to keep working on it. 
And I realized that I have quite a, like I have a number of projects that are like that. A number of projects where I've said to you folks, I've said, oh, I'll show you what I'm working on next thing. And I don't. So I'm going to get back to those. I'm going to return to them. And Jay saying, oh, at school for pickup now. So the connection may drop on me. But if it does have a great day, thank you, Jay. You have a great day too. And give uh, your lovely little family some giant love from me. And anyone else who's out there, I extend that to you as well. Love from the living room. If you need a little bit of that in your day, feel free to take it. If you don't, that's totally cool. How amazing that people are watching things as they're on the move. That we can listen and do these that te technology. Brilliant. Brilliant. This is exactly the kind of thing, actually, that I can have and do on a rainy day. Just this lovely slowness of stitching. Especially if it's not something that I have to get, you know, exact. It's lovely. It's really meditative. listening to the sounds as well. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear the thread going through the fabric? Maybe not. It's a pretty subtle sound. Art ASMR. <laughs> For another day, perhaps. So folks, as we come to, what, 3.30? That's only quarter after now, so we've still got time. But I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. I'd like to thank everyone who participates in the chat. I'd like to thank everyone who just watches or listens from wherever you might be. Maybe you can only spend a few minutes here with us, and that's okay. I'd like to thank everyone who watches it once it's been archived. You're a part of our community, too. And I appreciate you being here and sharing your energy with us. Hmm. And thank you for helping create such a relaxing space for me today. I feel a little bit like, I guess, is it raining outside? Huh. It looks like the sky is gray, so it's not raining where I am yet. Maybe it's raining where you are. But I do like today, for me anyways, I'm feeling that sense of quiet and comfort. Feeling grounded. And relaxed. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty relaxed, which is really nice. And if that's what you were looking for today, I hope you were able to take a little bit of that away with you. If you're looking to feel energized, let us know. And we can see what we can do for you. <laughs> oh my goodness, am I going to complete this loop, the stitching circuit. Let's see. Let's see. The 
There's always that moment when I'm stitching. It's kind of like a little dare. Can I finish when I'm using this thread, this tiny little bit of thread? Oh, and Wendy's saying, very windy here. I like the sound of the leaves and the wind. Oh, what a sound. What a sound is that? And that's something for a lot of us, I think. No matter where you live, you can hear that if you think on it, if you focus on it. In the autumn, or any time of year where the leaves are dry and begin to fall from the trees, and those beautiful moments where the wind will suddenly take them down to the ground in a gust. Yeah, there's some beautiful moments if we let ourselves enjoy them. I love that sound too. I do, Wendy. All right. Well, that might be good enough for now. Maybe I can get a few more stitches out of it. Let's see. One more thread. Shall I try? Maybe a running stitch in this last moment. Hmm. 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 That one. Let's see, not a race, just me wanting to continue hanging out with you. And Jay saying, blue skies overhead at school, but black clouds to the west coming in. Kind of hoping for a good storm tonight. Yeah, storms are one of those beautiful and intense things. For some of us, we love them. I'm one of those people who always loves a good storm, of course. I'm lucky enough that I can appreciate them from inside. Uh, Others, the storms can be scary things. For some of our pets too, some of them do, you know, storms are not appreciated by a lot of our pets. But there's something about that force of nature, being reminded about that force of nature within reason. Again, a comfort in a strange way. For myself, perhaps being reminded of that which is larger than me, than my problems, my issues. Hey, Jacqueline, good afternoon to you too. Good afternoon, how are you doing? It's good to see you here. <laughs> yeah, sometimes with a good storm, there's a sense of, hmm, what, surrender? Just being able to appreciate it. A nice reminder. Of the power of nature. <laughs> what am I making? Well, well, Jacqueline, I am making well, I'm using all my fabric scraps to create some accessories. I think what this is going to turn into is a kind of, uh, it's part of a, a cuff, a bracelet or a cuff that I'm making. I'm going, just using up these scraps and stitching by hand. I was saying before that I sometimes do this on my machine, which helps things go a lot faster, but I miss the meditative quality of hand stitching. And they turn out, I don't know, they're less personal somehow. So once this is done, I will probably cut it out and then layer it on top of another piece of fabric and perhaps with others overlap and create a kind of collage fabric uh, bracelet out of these pieces. And each one will tell its own story, and forever this one will be related to the conversation that I've been having with everyone here today. So in my own small way, we were talking about creating memories before. This one little piece here will always be connected to this conversation and to this moment, this afternoon that I've spent with everyone here. So thank you for that. Oh! Here comes the rain. Look at that. Hmm. 
What are you working on, Jacqueline? And in these last few minutes, folks, we have 10 minutes left around. If you'd like to share what you've been working on during this time, please feel free. And for folks who turn, tune in after once it's been archived, as I was saying at the beginning, you are welcome to share what you've been working on or to comment, share your thoughts, your ideas. I may not see them right away. And if folks don't respond, it's maybe because it is in archive mode but you're welcome to send us messages, send us emails at info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org. And as soon as I have a moment, I'll get back to you. And after this, after this live stream, I'll do what I do, I think most Wednesdays. I think B started this tradition actually, where I'll make another separate post, a show and tell kind of post where people can share pictures of what they're working on, links to things that they've been creating. You can share what you've been working on today or other things that you've been sharing and creating during the week. It's all good. It all counts. And Jacqueline says, well, yo, we are well, Mary. Heavy rain just started for a second time. Oh, wow. Sometimes that's something big to think about how, yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a whole other conversation how one block over or one neighborhood over, it can be pouring rain and in another completely dry. And here, just doing a little running stitch to add some accents to this piece and to secure it a little bit more. It is a rainy afternoon. Now. <laughs> and Jacqueline's saying, very interesting creation. Yes. I think that's one thing that could be, you could, a word you could use to describe everything I create. Interesting. Interesting is one of those excellent words that can mean a lot of different things. <laughs> But it does make me think, as I was telling the story of where this was inspired earlier, that I should revisit this. And maybe, maybe I'll do a little digging after this tonight and see if I can find that shop online, the shop I went to in Lafayette. And maybe, who knows, maybe that artist will be selling new things there. And I'll have an opportunity to reach out and connect and thank them for their inspiration. Why not? It's worth a try. So that's kind of fun. I do like that. I do like that. A little bit wonky, as it should be, because I'm a little bit wonky. Well, sometimes it's a lot more than a little bit, but you know, I really like that. Oh, and ja Jacqueline says, yes, recro. So this is what Jacqueline's working on, recro recrocheting a shawl for a Christmas present, had to tear out and redo. Oh, oh, the moment when you realize, yeah, there's a major error that I couldn't recover from. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. I mean, there's, we were talking about this earlier, actually, when I was doing a bit of a watercolor warm, warm up. Um, you know, sometimes the accidents, the mistakes that happen in the work that we do, we're able to incorporate them, have a little bit of perspective, appreciate them, roll with it, maybe even uh, expand upon them and highlight. Suddenly the mistake becomes a fabulous feature. But yeah, every once in a while, especially if we're doing or creating something practical and that moment that thing happens that goes wrong and you're like, oh, there's that moment you can turn back or you can keep on going. That's the conversation we have with ourselves and we have with our inner critics sometimes, but 
Yeah, that happens to me when I'm sewing and I'm making something to wear or to, you know, something practical. And there's always a moment when I realize, oh, I've stitched the lining in the wrong way. Do I unpick all of this and go back? Yes, sometimes you do and you can. And in those moments where you can go back and revisit and undo, oh, hello, Andrew. Andrew, I'll always see you sitting with the ukulele playing beautiful music for us at the studio. Oh, yes, more ukulele, always. Uh, but yeah, in those moments, it's okay to go back and redo if you can too. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. There's the rain. How lovely. Ah, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being with me while I create. While I created a watercolor. Let's see if it's dry. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Let's see, side by side, what do we see? So this was my mood circle, my watercolor mood circle that I created at the beginning for a warm up. Yeah, looking at it now, it's all dry. It's quite, quite. I like it, I really do. And it definitely feels connected to nature and the natural world in some way. I love that. I think I might actually cut that out and post it and stick it in one of my journals that I have, one of my art journals that I work with. And then this piece, moving on to that. Oh, I love it. Tactile. Beautiful. I can't wait to see how it grows. And I promise, I promise, well, you know, I'll do what I can to share this with you once, whenever it is complete, whenever I have a final product ready to share, I will, but that might take some time. And Carlos, oh, thank you, Carlos. Carlos says, thanks as always for this, Mary. It was a really calming and beautiful space. Thanks for the creation and thanks to all that were here today too. I echo that as well. What a beautiful, relaxing afternoon. I hope wherever you are that you're doing okay, that you're safe, that you're loving yourself and finding that time to just be who you need to be in this moment. And please, yeah, if you've created things that you'd like to share, even if it is a beautiful mess that you've created, beautiful messes are always welcome, beautiful mistakes as well. Share whatever you'd like uh, in the show and tell or in the comment section here. And if you see other folks around from the studio, from the community, from our extended living room community on the world, please say hello to them for me. Pass along warm, consensual, uh, creative hugs. Does that make sense? Maybe not. That could sound weird. Just say hi to them for me. I'm thinking of you and I'm wishing you well and I can't wait to connect and create with you again. So yes, of course, how we sign off here until we can connect and create with one another again in person. I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. Thanks for being a part of our virtual hive and contributing your fabulous energy. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>